You've seen me complete the museums in both Animal Crossing GameCube and New Horizons, but today we're going to try it in a whole new game, Stardew Valley. If you've played Stardew Valley, which it seems like most of you have, then you'll know how much different to Animal Crossing's museum that it is. For one, there's only 95 items to collect, and there's no bugs, fish, or sea creatures. It's artifacts and minerals. Stuff that you dig up, and stuff that you mine, essentially. Here's a list of the 52 minerals and the 42 artifacts that you can donate. There's multiple ways of collecting pretty much everything on these lists, so whatever way we end up doing this should be very interesting indeed. So this is my character, we're going to use the standard farm with the standard settings. Let's see how long it takes to complete the museum in Stardew Valley. Let's see, give it a little three, two, one, go. Okay, it froze for a concerningly long time there, but that's okay. Stardew is nice because you can pretty much hit the ground running immediately, no tutorial or anything. We'll sell the parsnip seeds that we start with because we don't need to do a lick of farming this entire run. In fact, the money that we get from selling them will prove to be far more useful than the seeds themselves. We should spend the first few days foraging for artifacts since we can't go mining for minerals for the first few days while the mines open up. Day 5, the mines unlock. Okay, so I might skip until day 5. Let's just do, like, a lap around town and see if we see any forageables. Um, okay, yeah, they do spawn. Alright, so on the beach, I think there's a good chance of getting, like, glass shards. What? Wait a minute! That thing, if I remember, strange doll, all green. 0.08%. So our first museum donation is a strange doll, which was completely unexpected given the odds of getting it from the beach, which is actually 0.06% chance, or a 3 in 4,997 chance. We were better off waiting for secret note number 17 to show up and getting it that way, where it's guaranteed. Not a single piece in the entire club. This guy sucks. What's this? You found something. Let me see it. I don't even know you. Hmm. I got a favor to ask you. Would you consider donating any artifacts or minerals that you find? Absolutely. Think about it, will you? Yeah, I'll think about it. We get the strange doll donated, and that is one of 95 things complete for the museum. So, no romance? Nah, dude, this guy's a straight batch. He's gonna be the weird guy. This guy's gonna be the weird guy that just collects, like, various knickknacks and stuff. He doesn't interact with anyone, he just, like, collects his, like, Funko Pops and shit. For the first few in-game days, we're gonna spend a lot of our time and energy clearing out the farm. The farm has a lot of area for artifacts to spawn, and we want to make sure that they have the room to spawn and are easily findable. I'm going to bed. I did nothing today. This is what I do, man. I do nothing, and then I go to bed, and then I feel bad about doing nothing. Hey, I already got level 1 foraging. Alright. Cool. Upon waking up the next morning, he willy. Hey, Rusty Spur. Number two. That's a pretty common one, though. Like, Rusty Spur on the farm is 10%. So every 10 dig spots will give you a Rusty Spur. I said earlier that most items have multiple ways of being acquired. Fishing is another common method for getting artifacts and minerals. You can get them through the treasure chests that appear when you play the fishing minigame. In fact, we'll find over the course of this run that some things are best acquired this way. Oh, I got a geode. Geodes are most of the reason why we want to do mining during this run. Between the various kinds of geodes, they can give us probably half the donatable items in the museum. But not always. Copper? Did anyone ever tell this guy to go fuck? On the 5th of spring, we unlock two very crucial parts of the run. The dog... ...and the mines. Like I said before, the mines are good for geodes, but they also give gems that we need for the museum, like quartz, emerald, and diamond. Plus, monsters can drop a lot of the artifacts that we need, and getting to the bottom of the mines unlocks the skull caverns in the desert, which will be critical for finishing the challenge. Someone tell his ass to open up, please. From our first trip, we got quartz, an earth crystal, and a couple of geodes to crack open. Alright, I got eight geodes. Hey, that's something we can donate. Okay, that's something we can donate. You don't have enough room. Oh, so I, so I don't. Unfortunately, that's all we got. But after donating our first trip's worth of items, we're up to six of 95 items donated. Can you fuck off? Dude, one of the worst things in this game is when you get like... Oh, topaz. Nice. One of the worst things in this game is when you get surrounded by slimes and they all just like nuke your speed and you just can't escape them. Subsequent mine visits get us limestone, mudstone, and amethyst. Then we get a chicken statue from the farm. 
You might also wonder if lost books count for this speedrun, and I mean, eh, not really. They are collectibles, but does anyone really consider them part of the museum? Either way, we'll probably collect them all naturally when trying to look for artifacts, since they also come from the ground. The regular ones first. Okay, that's good. That's also good. That's good. Alright, he's doing much better now. That's also good! And then now the Omni Geodes, which can give you anything, pretty much. Okay, we need that. And that's a repeat of something that we just got. I mean, dude, I can't be too mad at that, really. Like, that's pretty good. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Wait, what? What the hell? What am I... Was I just not counting when I was got Clint's there? So geodes have been going well for us, and now we're into the frozen levels of the mine, where we can get frozen geodes. Frozen geodes get us certain items that regular geodes cannot. And then when we get to the magma levels, we'll start finding magma geodes, which work the same way. These three kinds of geodes all have items unique to that geode that we can donate, but Omni Geodes, as the name would imply, can have all of those. Of course, with so many things you can get from Omni Geodes, hoping for one specific thing from them will be tough, but Omni Geodes will have another purpose that we will discuss later on. Dude, I can't be fucking around here. I kinda, like... Oh, Jade, yes. Aquamarine, yes. That's two. I get out, dude. I need, I need to get the fuck out of here. I need to get level 50, and I need to get home. Oh, thank God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. All right, that's another one. 20. Okay, that's new. And that, I believe, is new. All right? Yeah. All right, cool. Should be at 22 now. Day one of the challenge ends with a ruby from a gem node and a diamond from, uh, well, a diamond node. That gives us 24 things donated so far, about a quarter of the way done. We also managed to reach 67 levels in the caves in one day, or about two weeks in-game. That's pretty good, I would say. We start day two with an ancient drum from a leftover frozen geode from yesterday. Yeah, it does. Ooh, dwarf scroll too. Nice. Dwarf Scroll is going to be a pain in the ass to get, so I'm happy to get one of those, even if it is just one. We also get to level 80 in the mines, thus beginning the magma levels. Like I said before, magma geodes have a much different pool of potential items to geodes I've collected before, so this will be great for us. Now, what I'm about to say may hurt some of you, but I promise you, this is what needs to be done. Okay? I'm going to do... Jojo route. All right, all right, all right. Let me explain. Let me explain. Just listen to me, okay? Just listen to me. Jojo route is better for this speed run because it saves a lot of time and effort completing bundles by paying money rather than donating items. So being able to pay for the membership and immediately unlocking access to all the bundles by paying is so much easier than donating the things that I need. Now the bus is, admittedly, also unlocked by paying via the restoration route, but remember that you need to complete a couple of bundles before you can even donate to the safe in the community center. This just saves so much time and effort that I would otherwise spend looking for items rather than trying to complete the the museum. Plus, if I have extra money eventually, I can also pay to unlock stuff like the quarry, the minecarts, and whatever else I want. So I know Jojo route is treason, but just get over it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes, ancient doll. 27. Yay, look at it! It's beautiful! Look at it! Oh, that's awesome! I hate how good this looks. I decided to upgrade my pickaxe to copper since we've been earning copper passively, and it'll help with getting through the final stages of the mines much quicker. A couple more trips to the mines yields us a fire quartz and a few magma geodes, giving us hellvite and neptunite. That puts us at 30 donations total now. Not long after that, we hit the bottom of the mines. Well, that's the bottom of the mines. What do we get for that? The skull key. Okay, so now we can do the skull caverns. Uh, once we unlock the desert, which I still need to save up 42,000, 40,000 to unlock. So we still got a ways to go as far as making money, but we are at the end of the caverns. It's we will, of course, still use the mines to farm geodes and pick up any donatable item that we may have missed. Likely something that's dropped by a monster. You missed a spot? No, I missed a diagonal. Also, I don't see what you're talking about. I have missed nothing. By the door? Alright, you better be right. Or someone else is gonna... Oh, you're right. Wow, that was sneaky. 
And I needed it. Oh my god, I have to mod someone for 10 minutes. That's the greatest, like, chat retribution I've ever seen. Would have been uh, quite upset if I missed that, knowing that it was something that I needed. Hey, and then I got a uh, ornamental fan from the beach. What are the chances of that, actually? I don't feel like I remember that being common at the beach. Oh no, that's 1.6% at the beach. Okay, it's actually the best place for it. Cool. A lot of artifacts can be found in multiple locations. The ornamental fan, for example, can be found at the beach, in the forest, or in town. But as you can see, it has the best chance of spawning on the beach. So if you're ever struggling to find an artifact, make sure that you're checking the right areas of the map with the best percentages possible. No. 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 Yes. No. Go fuck yourself. Getting one thing that I need out of all that is not very nice. What do you think is like a sufficient reward for that? One million dollars? A gift sub? Ooh, chipped amphora. Very good. 35. Hey, prehistoric arrowhead. Very good. 36. And that wraps up day two of this challenge. At this point, I was getting a little tired of repeatedly going into the mines for geodes, cracking them, and then going back. So I tried fishing for a little bit, just to mix it up, and also to see what that would get us. Oh shit, here we go. Alright, ignore that for a little bit. There we go. Now oh, you get a geode? Okay, so not only do you get artifacts straight up sometimes, you also get geodes, which then of course could lead to more artifacts as well. Alright. Bait? I mean, that's good once I get an updated rod where I can actually use bait. I can't use bait with this rod. Treasure chests are most often acquired on days with high luck, so on days where our luck isn't so good, that's when we'll go mining and artifacting. Alright, another good fishing day? Nah, it's neutral today. But that's okay, because we still have to look around for artifact spots today as well, because they're going to refresh on Sunday. Speaking of artifacting, it seems that Saturday is the best in-game day to collect them. Artifact spots reset on Sunday, so on Saturday, all the artifact spots that have accumulated throughout the week will all be there before the reset tomorrow. Now, artifact spots do despawn over the course of the week, albeit at a lesser rate than they spawn. At least it seems that way. There's a couple things. Nice! Prehistoric tibia is something that I need. I was about to say, I think there is a couple things, maybe not exclusively that spawn back here, but you might have the best chances at the train station better than anywhere else. I guess a lot of people must like Sandy. That's new. Definitely don't recognize it. Yeah, there we go. And I think is that new? That is also new. All right. Well, that's just fantastic news. That is not new, but that's still pretty good. You guys got to get more original. Ooh, palm fossil. Nice. 40. No, I don't know if their ages are ever confirmed, but, um... Oh, trilobite. Very good. On the 1st of December, a cutscene plays revealing Krobus, who gives us the magnifying glass. That lets us see secret notes, which are the best way of collecting the strange dolls. We already got the secret doll at the very start, but we'll need to find secret note number 18 to find the yellow one. At least most likely. I believe in you? Well, I can't, like, do it anymore, so you have to, like, remind me later. Amphibian fossil! Alright, cool there. I don't know, should I, like, go bust in there and see? Ooh, Ancient Sword is another donatable as well. I missed the fish, but that's fine, because I got the Ancient Sword. Nice. Alright, so fishing is actually proving to be pretty good. There's a lot of, as it turns out, there's multiple ways to get everything in the museum. So, it's kind of hard to plan for how you're going to get all the things, when you could just end up getting it some way else, you know? Like, fishing is not really how I had anything in mind for how I was going to get it, but it's how I've gotten a few things now, so I think I'm going to keep doing it. Would you drink Joja Cola in real life? No. Skeletal Tail. 44. And the spot's gone. Well, that's fine, because honestly, I've had my fair share of fishing for today. We do, we are not even halfway there. Like, I feel like we're really starting to slow down because of how, like, harder and harder it is, of course, to get all the things that we still haven't donated. But that is something that we still need. It's kind of crazy how we are not even halfway and the pace of this has slowed down so much. I'm hoping that changes once we get the Skull Caverns, but uh, it's definitely slowing down a lot. A couple weeks into winter, we finally have enough saved up to afford the bus repair, allowing us to access the desert and, most importantly, the Skull Caverns. Yes. Bus. Alright, very good. Excellent! We'll get the workers on it tonight. It should be ready for you by tomorrow. I hope it's Shane. I hope it's fucking Shane doing it. 
I want Shane to be the only person fixing that fucking bus. I want his ass grinding until 5 a.m. fixing that thing. I really do. I guess we'll see in the cutscene, right? Oh, he's actually out there supervising it. Wow. Yeah, that's good super. That's you know, Most managers wouldn't do that, you know? All right, Pampster, let's get a move on here. And good. All right, here we go. We're going to go... Well, we'll look around the desert first for forageables. And then it's straight to the Skull Caverns with me. Despite a few spots, I didn't find any new artifacts in the desert. The Golden Mask and the Golden Relic both have good chances to spawn in the desert, so we should get them both eventually. In the Skull Caverns, though, our goal is simply to collect as many Omni Geodes as we can. Well, it's a Pepper Rex! Wait, Pepper Rexes can drop some good stuff. Pepper Rexes can drop very good things, notably, like, a lot of, like, bones and shit. Like, a dinosaur egg! Like that! There you go. All right. That's usually one of the bigger pains of the asses to get is the dinosaur egg. This is gaming. Yeah, this is actually, like, pretty good. I mean, that... <laughs> if you told me I'd only get a dinosaur egg in this trip, I'd have been like, that's a success. So, anything after this is gravy. Okay, this is nah. Yeah, I mean... That was sort of an ambush, dude. Now I just have to hope I didn't lose both my Omni Geodes and my Dinosaur Egg, and I can only get one of them back. I lost six items, including the Dinosaur Egg, but luckily nothing else that's that useful, so luckily I can just get it back from the guild. Is anything going to be open with the Night Market in town? Like, is Marlin... Oh my god, fuck off. You can go later. That's what I was wondering, is can you go back later and get it? Like, it doesn't have to be the same day that you die, right? Is what I'm wondering. It doesn't have to be the same day that you die. Alright, well, there was something good that came out of this. Rusty Spoon. Luckily, we kept our Omni Geodes after dying, and they gave us Obsidian to donate. Ooh, that is also new as well. Very good. Alright, item recovery. Give me my dinosaur egg back. Oh, here we go. This is the Pepper Rex level I was talking about. From this, that's a little dangerous. Oh, shit. Jesus. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I need a prehistoric vertebrae. Also, I have a secret note. Okay, I don't care about that one. It's probably the most useless one in the game. And they're like... So, basically, I try to phrase it... Nice! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! I must just shit my pants. Okay. Um, I don't need topaz. All right, well, that's amazing. I don't think I need to tell you. A prismatic shard. That's why we wanted to get to Iridium. Cool. That was a very successful day. I don't know how much better that could have gone. I feel like I got so much stuff that the counter isn't even right now, because I got, like, overwhelmed there. Okay, I think I need that, right? Yep. That's, I guess, sure. And I need that. All right. All righty. 45, 47, 49, 51, 53. 53 things donated. All right, great news. I want at least three new things to donate from these 13, or else I'm going to execute him on stream with a gun. That I don't need. That is not even donatable. Oh my god, I'm going to kill him. I don't need that. Okay, I do need that. Even though it's not like barely worth anything, I don't need that. I don't need that. I... I don't need that. And I don't need that. Wow, that was very underwhelming. I was really hoping for better than that. At the end of day three, we now have 54 total donations complete. Day four starts off well with 13 Omni Geodes getting us Fairy Stone, Hematite, Star Shards, Kyanite, and Barite. Also, with the money I gathered, I unlocked the minecarts to travel around town a lot quicker. Ooh, I think that might be... Is that 18, I think? Hang on. Yeah, that's it. So that's the other strange doll, the one that we haven't gotten yet. That's huge. All right, that's the secret note we've been looking for. I've embarrassingly never collected an emerald in all the mining that I've done so far. That plus a prehistoric rib, aronite, and necoite gives us 63 total donations. At 60 donations, Gunther comes over to the farm to present you with the key to unlock the sewers. I wish that proved more useful over the course of this challenge, but sadly, the sewers provide minimal benefit outside of a star drop that I cannot yet afford. Alright, Clunt, give me something good. It's not good. 
That's good. I believe that's a fire opal. Yep. Cool. 64. That is not new. That is new. Alrighty. This is turning out alright. That's, I think, also new. No, it's not. God damn it. Alright. That was pretty good, though. Because I definitely don't remember ever doing that. Hey, another prismatic shard. Now, is it worth getting the galaxy sword? Because honestly, I, I'm still fucking with this sword. I like it. But, you know, it's probably worth upgrading, right? Here's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to... Um, sack my thing and then get that sword because like i don't know what else do i do with it sell it i guess yeah that's much better oh my god wait 60 to 80 oh my god wait was it even a contest what the hell am i talking about of course and then and then and then and then and then and then real quickly uh we have a secret note that told us how to get the other strange doll that i needed which was down here by the bench it's this one right here. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's the other strange doll. And that in itself is something that I can donate, of course. I want glass shards or a dried starfish. Yes! It listened to me. Screen. Oh, there we go. Yeah, put my guys together there. Don't worry. For those of you who are having like a, a nightmare over how unorganized this museum is, trust me when I say that I will uh, definitely totally fix it once I get to the end of this challenge. You have my like word kind of a few more geodes gets us an opal a dwarf gadget and a celestine here's where that puts us as far as minerals that i've now collected it leaves us with dolomite fluorupatite geminite lunarite ghost crystal tiger's eye jasper and marble sorting these remaining minerals into which geode they most commonly come from five of the eight come from frozen geodes and three most commonly come from magma geodes so naturally let's take a break from the skull caverns for a while and spend some time in the frozen levels of the mine ah well at least i can like two what it's not a one shot well, at least I can, like, handle all the enemies in here. And actually, the enemies often straight up just drop geodes as well, don't they? Am I gaslighting myself? But I'm pretty sure, like, the enemies sometimes just drop magma geodes. Or, uh, frozen geodes in this case. Oh, there we go. We got two from a rock. All right, all right, good. So, it's, it's, so it is just the same as getting omni geodes from the skull caverns. After a quick check on the beach... Nice! Anchor, finally. We crack open 12 frozen geodes, which only gives us a marble. Another trip, though, gives us a dwarvish helm, which is, uh, not a mineral, but still welcome. I'm also keen on getting some ore smelted to upgrade my pickaxe, allowing me to get through the mines much quicker. Good luck with that. Hey, there's the dried starfish. Good lord, although it's wet. It's the wet- it's the wetted starfish. Privilege, then. Thank you. Finally, I got a golden mask. I feel like I get that like the first time I go to the desert every time. It took me like 500 trips this time. All right, but now I got a good pickaxe and nothing can stop me except for serpents. Like how... Okay, now it's two taps to break a rock, which is a lot, lot better than it was before. All right, very good. So that's one thing that's new. And then along with the golden mask, I'm gonna have to count just to get my counter right. 73... 75, 76, 76. So do you remember when I spoke about Omni Geodes having another purpose other than just cracking open? Well, it's time to talk about that. Back in the desert, we can speak to the desert trader who will trade five Omni Geodes for one artifact trove. Artifact troves act as a sort of geode, but for artifacts only. It's five Omni Geodes per artifact trove, and they can contain a number of different artifacts, many of which we still need to donate. That's not an artifact. I don't need to donate that. I need- I don't need that. I do need that. Okay. Alright, at least we got one thing that we needed. I also need that, despite how fucking common it is. And that's just a treasure chest, which you can sell for a lot of money. Wait, so not even everything that you can get from that is something that you need to donate, necessarily. Oh. Alright, I mean, I guess it's whatever, because we got two things that we needed, so no big deal, I guess. Along with needing magma geodes, we should also till the soil in the mines to get the last two dwarf scrolls that I need. I hoped I would come across them naturally as drops from monsters, but sadly that didn't happen. So tilling the soil in the mines at this level has a 0.2% chance per tile of giving me a dwarf scroll 4, and a 0.16% chance of giving me a dwarf scroll 1. Which isn't bad, considering I can till pretty quickly with my upgraded hoe. 
Along with other things, we can also get a rusty cog using this method as well. I don't know if I've... Nice! Let's go. Okay, that is something new that I need. Rusty cog. 90... Or 79, rather. Now, I have donated that, but whatever. Yes! Nice! Nice! Let's fucking go! We're up to 80. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm the only, like, person in my entire... Ooh, four. Nice. That, plus an arrowhead... Ooh! Alright! Is where we finish this day off. 82 of 95 items donated. We are on to day 6, where our goal is to finish minerals by the end of today, starting with minerals found in frozen geodes. Frozen geodes can give us, um, Fluropatite, Geminite, and Lunarite are the three things that we need from frozen geodes. If I can get one of these things from here, I'd be very happy. Is that one of them? I don't think so. No. That's also not one of them. Is my blood okay? Thank you. Okay, that is one thing that I needed. So that's 83. What is that again? Is that... I think that's Lunarite, right? Alright, well we got one thing. I guess that's not bad. Would you guys watch me if I was called Millhouse? Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not expecting good things here. My dear boy. It's been many years since we last spoke. You were just a little boy. Do you remember? No. Look how far you've come. Though you may have forgotten me, I've been here all along. You see, my body... My body has departed this world, but my heart will always remain in Stardew Valley. Oh, your father's a real piece of shit, kid. You've been here two years now. You've done a good job with the place. Dude, you can just be honest with me. You don't have to lie. Seems you've tried your... Oh my god, no. It seems that you've tried your best. That's all I can ask for. I'm proud of you. That's the bad ending. I've never had anything but the best uh, review from him. So that's the first time I've ever heard, Well, I'm just really proud of you and that's all that matters, right? Okay, so I got a 2 out of 4. So I think 4 candles being lit is the best, right? And I got 2? Hmm. So, what you're saying is I didn't get the absolute worst result. Which I'm actually kind of surprised by. I don't need that, right? No. That I do need, and I was actually more likely to get that from the Frozen Geo. That was one of the two things, and I need that too! What the fuck? Okay, that's two things I need, back to back. This was more likely to have gotten from a Frozen Geode, and this was more likely from a Magman Geode. And I just got both of them from the Omni Geodes. Okay, shit. That was really good. Another trip to the Skull Caverns yields us 35 Omni Geodes, which can be traded for seven Artifact Troves. Alright, here we go. Seven Artifact Troves. I literally just got one of those off my farm. Yes! Ancient Seed! Oh, let's fucking go! Alright, we got one new thing. I'm happy with even just that. That being said, if you wanted to not give me another bone flute... He thinks he's funny. Now that minerals are pretty much wrapped up, barring a couple, our focus has shifted more so towards getting the last several artifacts that we need. Here they are, the Elvish Jewelry, Nautilus Fossil, Prehistoric Scapula, Skeletal Hand, Golden Relic, Dwarf Scroll 1, and Rare Disc. One thing that might help for the Skeletal Hand specifically is unlocking the quarry. The Haunted Skulls in there have a slim chance of dropping a Skeletal Hand, just 1.3%, but they respawn every day and there are usually quite a few of them. I figure that's a good way of getting that one done. Three of those remaining artifacts can be acquired through artifact troves, those being the Elvish Jewelry, Golden Relic, and Rare Disc. The Prehistoric Scapula can be foraged decently common in the Cinder Sap Forest, the Nautilus Fossil is pretty common from fishing treasure chests, and the Dwarf Scroll 1 will probably need to be tilled from the soil in the mines. So there's your updates on remaining artifacts. Right now, I'm trying to find the Nautilus Fossil by fishing. Unsuccessfully, sadly. But I did manage to get one frozen geode in the process. I mean, still beef. I- that- holy shit! That's the thing that I needed from a frozen geode! Holy shit! That was like a one in... Uh, I don't know what it was, but that was very 
unlikely to have gotten that. Wow. Of the one frozen geode that I got from fishing. Well, that's everything that I need from frozen geodes. Now I just need... There's only one more mineral left, and it's Jasper. Just Jasper now. So I think we wait for a good luck day, and then... Ryan Magma Geodes, it sounds like. I stack up a whole 32 Magma Geodes before bringing them to Clint. And if I don't get even one Jasper from all these, I'm gonna get really, really mad. All right. Cool. There we go. It took one Magma Geode to get the last mineral that I needed. Very good. All right, that's every mineral complete, which is a great way to finish off day six. So all we have left is artifacts, seven of them to be exact. Here's what we need and the most likely way to get all of them. Two items most likely are required through artifact troves, with the golden relic being possible to get from them as well. Though they're so common in my experience that it stuns me that I haven't managed to get one from the ground yet. But any way that I can get it works, I guess. Hey, there we go, finally! Jesus, God! Oh my goodness gracious, this was... I have found so many of these in normal playthroughs because they're really common in the desert. And I mined so much shit in the desert, never found one. It took getting an artifact trope to get it. And then I get a second one. That's... okay. That's funny. He thinks he's funny. And there's the Elvish Jewelry! That's 90! Holy shit! Oh, what a... this is a winner right here. I don't... yeah, literally, I don't care what else I get. We're good. The plan for the rest of the items is to farm haunted skulls in the quarry mines for the skeletal hand, should I not find it in the backwoods, continue farming omni geodes from the skull caverns to trade for artifact troves for the rare disc, and fish for the nautilus fossil, and forage in the mines and forest for dwarf scroll 1 and the prehistoric scapula, respectively. Like, you say because of no dwarf scroll 4, but maybe, you know, this level spawns other things, like the rusty spoon. Maybe that doesn't spawn on level 95, so I don't know. Maybe it bounces out? Never mind! Let's go! Ah! Rawr! Sorry, there's people outside that probably heard me doing that, but rawr! I don't care. Yay. Dwarvish translation guide. <gasps> we got it! Holy shit, I like one-shot it. It freaked me out. Oh my god. Alright, cool. Got the skeletal hand. Jesus Christ, I freaked out there. I don't know why, like, the combination of him, like, one-shotting that, and I was gonna be like, Oh, cool! He- I- uh, what a one-shot, dude. And then also dropping the skeletal hand, like, freaked me out for a second. Alright, cool. Alright, I got ten. Mm-mm. Alright, well, these, this is what matters. Yes! Yes! It only took one! It only took one! Let's go! Oh my god, can I get anything else from these artifact troves? Like, did I- do I now just have nine that I can't do anything with? Um, now... Prehistoric scapula and nautilus fossil. Yeah, Americans don't have ovens, little known fact. If we want to heat up our food, we just- <sighs> We just breathe on it. Yeah, that, that, that is actually true. Ooh, okay, good. British cuisine. All right. Oh, my God. Jesus, finally. Oh, my God. I was just about to go off on British cuisine. Oh, my God. Finally. Oh, my good God. And now it's too late to even donate it to the museum. Oh, my God. At that point, it had been an hour straight of fishing to get the Nautilus fossil, thus the expressive relief. That leaves only the prehistoric scapula, an item that I never remember struggling to find in past playthroughs. Which makes sense, it is a 6% chance per artifact spot in the Cinder Sap Forest. Skeletons also drop them, but only at a 0.5% chance per skeleton. And given that there's only 9 levels in the mines that skeletons can spawn, it really doesn't seem like the right way to go. So we're gonna stumble around, checking the forest every Saturday for artifact spots. Because that is, as far as I'm aware, the best that we can do. Come on. There we go. A complete collection. Oh my god, I even got a Steam achievement. I- wow, holy smokers. Wow, get all my rewards here as well. Look at all that. Oh, and the star drop. Of course. World record timing. Asterisk. 
When we stop the timer, it reads 24 hours, 19 minutes, and 17 seconds. I have no idea how good, bad, or painfully average that time is. All I know is I had fun. I was asked to compare how this full museum challenge differed from my Animal Crossing ones. Well, there's definitely less items and more ways to get them, which I think makes it a lot more fun. Not that I didn't enjoy doing it in Animal Crossing, but this was definitely a lot less daunting. Stardew doesn't require you to catch every fish, kill every monster, or anything like that. And I think that that's nice. Those aspects of completion are definitely something that you can do if you want, but I like the museum being separate. Speaking of, if there's any other Stardew challenges that you would like me to do, say so in the comments. I definitely wouldn't be against playing this game on my channel again in the near future. Thank you for watching.